Hey, deserving listeners, we have a very special guest with us on the YouTube channel and podcast. Shelby from Girlfriend Reviews YouTube Hi. channel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a humongous fan of what you do that this is extremely exciting for me. I'm, I'm so stoked to be here. <laughs> I'm curious, when did you start watching my channel? Oh, gosh, it must have been... Uh, earlier seasons of 90 Day Fiance or Love is Blind. Are you a, a reality TV person? Yes, I am. Very much so. Well, what's your favorite shows to watch? Uh, 90 Day Fiance. The 90 Day Cinematic Universe is kind of my main thing, but I my interest is waning as it's getting more scripted, I guess, and garbagey. Uh, I love Love is Blind, though. I really like it. I <laughs> really like what they do. It's just not on very often, is no, the thing. No, it's not. They don't have all the, you know, they don't have Love is Blind happily ever after or before the Love is Blind yet. So maybe we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love is Blind single life. Well, I guess yes. that's, a, that's what it always is. <laughs> yeah. So when you reached out to me and we started chatting, I wanted to have you on the channel to just chat with you because your channel is really great. Thank you very much. And I thought we could talk about the concept of gamer widowship, gamer mm -hmm. widows, yeah. people who have partners who play a lot of video games. Over the years, I've seen an increase of complaints with my clients saying that their partner, and sometimes I'm treating the couple as well, their partner, they will just be playing video games. And there's no judgment. I like video games and yeah. grew up playing video games. I think you're the perfect person to talk to because you have found the answer when I see the two of you on the channel, because he's more of the gamer. He's like a very serious gamer yeah. and you dabble, but I, I want to go back to the beginning. How long ago did you meet him? I guess it would be eight years now and uh, we're coming up on our first wedding anniversary Oh. here very soon oh, congratulations um, thank you very much um so yeah I, but games have always been a huge presence in our relationship from from the jump so okay and he's uh, he, i'm assuming he's been a gamer since a teenager but what was your background with games yeah well he's he's been playing with games since he was a little baby boy but um i have always loved well music and that sort of thing so games like Guitar Hero and Dance Dance Revolution and rhythm games really appealed to me. Arcadey type things really appealed to me. I just never had the setup or knowledge. My dad, my dad was better. He was very techy and he he would like build PCs and stuff. But um, so he got me a PlayStation Two when I was in middle school. So that was like two thousand seven. Um, I played Dance Dance Revolution on my little like fold out mats and Guitar Hero from, you know, he, he would get like huge lots of eBay games and some of them were awful and maybe there was like a Grand Theft Auto thrown in there and I was a little bit young and I was just like, I don't even know how to play this. So it's been, it's been that and it was that pretty much until I met Matt. <laughs> how often would you say you played up until meeting Matt? Um, well... It, it, you know, I kind of go through phases where I'm really interested in one thing and then I'm no longer interested in it or, I, you know, it, it wanes and comes comes and goes. So uh, there were times where I would be playing video games every night. I was very interested in like a certain type of game and then months where I wouldn't play anything. Okay. You know, so, so that gives a, a good picture of your lifestyle when it comes mm -hmm. to games. So when you were first dating Matt, was it clear to you that he played a lot of video games? Mm -hmm. So yeah. right from the start, you, you knew that about him. Did yeah. you have any concern or thoughts about that in the beginning? No, I didn't. I, I was honestly interested in it, and I think it's cool. It, it might be a little bit of my <laughs> like leftover trying to be a cool girl uh, from back in the day, you know, oh, guys will think it's cool if I'm chill with the with the games or whatever, just residual leftover programming. So initially, I was just like, yeah, I want to see everything that you do and all the stuff that you have and all these weird toys and whatnot. And didn't Laura on uh, Love is Blind use that term pick me girl or something? Is that? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is that what the I didn't even know what that meant, but is that what that refers to? I guess so. Pick Me Girl, I would say usually more for 
a girl who like puts down other women especially but also is like i'm not like other girls i'm a cool girl i do i do skateboarding or you know one of those but <laughs> i think there's a hint of like misogyny in there too yeah like, totally totally you know? <laughs> so, yeah. it's like uh, why yeah. can't people just be adjusting of their interests you know to some extent mm -hmm. uh like i wouldn't be into pottery but my wife likes to do art and those sorts of things and so she yeah. invited me to go to a pottery class and i never would have done it otherwise mm -hmm. and i adjusted my preferences and now i love pottery so i'm a pick i'm a pick me husband <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, so did it ever in the beginning of your relationship interfere with something like you, you're thinking, oh, let's go out. And he's like, no, I'm really want to play a game. Not really. I mean, not not that I remember, because very early on, he was good at communicating with me when I know when uh, a big game or something was happening. He was very he would give me a heads up like, hey this thing is coming that I've been waiting for for a long time. And I know it's going to be you're going to have a hard time getting a hold of me or when you're here, I might be very focused on this thing. But it's temporary. Just let me play the game and then we'll be good. And, and that helps a lot that just get, getting a, some preparation time to be like, okay, I know that this is something that's important to this person. Okay, so so that's kind of a why in the road, because you could in that moment, say, internally or process that or deal with that by considering that to be a rejection. He's preparing you for a rejection. <laughs> he's preparing you for a, a moment of, you know, a, a period of time where he's going to be ignoring you and not paying attention to you and he's going to be unavailable. Instead, you saw it as what? I will say, I think that if he hadn't prepared me, I would have felt rejected. If, if I hadn't known that this was something that was important to him, then I would have been like, what is going on? Like, why? Oh, if you wanted to hang out with me, then you would. You would make time. But having the preparation, I, I, am, a, I am a person that, like, if I know something means a lot to you, I, I respect it and I want you to have that. So it was very natural for me to just be more curious and want to be a part of it rather than for me to feel uh, rejected or like I was being pushed away, I think. But um, yeah, I think it was definitely a match made in heaven in that sort of sense where we both were just like excited to share this thing with each other. And I, I, and I think that that's something that a lot of couples overlook is that, you know, there's a common conception that like games are brain rot or you know just n nonsense violence garbage and i find that so absolutely the opposite of what <laughs> games are so i think people who think like that when they the idea of playing a game with their partner they're just like why would i ever want to do that but if you think about it as something a hobby a thing that your partner is really passionate about it makes it it gives it this warmer light you know makes it more enticing does he watch reality tv with you he does yeah mm -hmm. would he have done that normally without no you? no one of the first things that we did when we started dating was uh you know he got the htc vive virtual reality set and i played job simulator very early on and it was very silly and fun and then i made him watch through season one and two of Flavor of Love with me. So, you know, we it's a, it's a give and take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a sign, according to research, of health and longevity and satisfaction in a relationship where individuals are uh, open to change and adjusting to the other person. Yeah, you know, of course, you can go too far with that and lose yourself, but what they find is that successful couples over time become more similar. <laughs> they start talking more similar. They start doing similar things. Their interests will change. Again, that, that can go too far. And I, I hear people saying, you shouldn't have to change if the relationship is going to work. And it's like, it, you know, it depends on what you mean, but adjusting to people around you and meeting in the middle and just, I mean, hearing you talk, it, it's inspiring, I think, because it uh, sounds like for the two of you, you have this natural philosophy or way of 
you see your partner doing something and it's not something you would be doing naturally. And instead of seeing that as a barrier, it's an opportunity. It's just like, hey, you know, what's going on? Like, I, I don't know if a lot of people do that. Yeah, now, I mean, now that you're talking to you about it, it's making me think like, oh, is that not, is that not a thing that people do? That is not. <laughs> okay. take, it, take it from me, couples will come to me and there'll be 15 years of living parallel lives without sharing things together. So it is, it is a little rare, I think. That just sounds so lonely. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very, very lonely. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it would be hard for me to not ask for that presence if of a of a partner if if i weren't getting it it would be hard for me to not be like i'm feeling like i miss you or like i'm you know not seeing you very often you know can you play that in here or whatever do you ever have to i mean you're at that eight year period where it starts to get into a routine sometimes do you ever have to alert him along those lines um not, I mean, not really. Sometimes I, sometimes when he's streaming by by himself uh, on Twitch, I he loses track of time, and suddenly it's like two in the morning, and I'm going in, and I'm like, Whoa, "Hello, hi." But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's mostly the time suck and the fact that you that you're it's easy to lose track of time. So sometimes I'll give him a heads up and be like, "Hey, it's been like so many hours, and I need you to come hang out with me now." But it's never like. Uh, I'm feeling neglected or, you know, whatever. Okay. So it's more of an active thing. And when you approach him, how do you negotiate that? Because he might be really into something at the time. Mm -hmm. right? Well, this, that's the thing. Matt and I both have ADHD, so we get um, hyper fixated definitely and don't want to be pulled away from something that has our attention because something has our attention. It's like, oh, finally, yay, <laughs> something, something interesting. So... It can be hard, but um, I think we both have learned that it serves to be gentle in our tone and our speaking that like that will go a lot further than getting angry or defensive or anything because at the end of the day, neither of us are trying to hurt each other. It's never an intention. I'm never, he and I are never intentionally trying to hurt each other is what I just said, <laughs> but um so I have to remind myself sometimes he's lost track of time. He's not avoiding me. Do not let yourself go down that rabbit hole because it is not true. Just go remind him that it's time to come hang out, you know, and it doesn't have to be a fight. And you have taught me so much about that, about approaching your partner and how to talk to them. And it's made a huge difference for us just not being for me not being defensive not getting angry listening it just makes such a huge difference there have been so many times now that i i can count where i'm just like that could have been a big fight if i had let it but i didn't i just said okay note to self got it well that's beautiful yeah that's that's a huge uh thing when it comes to lowering conflict and increasing togetherness and trust that there's those moments where you have the mounting hurt and the pain and the anxiety and it might be out of your awareness to some extent but you just find yourself pissed off you're just like what's going on like he's been in there for so long and then you have that differentiation moment where you're you, before you impulsively just you know do normally what you would do you think wait so i'm assuming what's going on with me? <laughs> I think I'm assuming he's doing this on purpose to hurt me, but uh, that's a leap. So wait, back up, backtrack. I'm missing him. And he's just hyper-focused on that one thing. Uh, it's not personal. So, I, 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 but I still want contact with him. So I need to approach him assuming that we're on the same page, we're on the same team, we're not at odds with each other, so I approach him differently. But then he has to rise to the occasion too, right? He has to, when you reach out and bid in a healthy way, he he has to respond in a way that that rewards, you know, whether it be, you know, giving you what you want or communicating in a very kind way of just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but I really need to finish this, you know, whatever it is 
that attends to what you're telling him. So it sounds like the two of you are doing that. That sounds really good. Yeah, we're trying our best. And um, it takes practice having that awareness for sure. But the 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 awareness and the ability to like catch yourself before you go down the rabbit hole is such a gift. It's it's amazing. It's it it's a life changer, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My marriage included. Yeah. Um so when did you decide to make the YouTube channel? Yeah, so it's kind of funny. It sort of seems like destiny a little bit. Um you know, Matt, when we met, was editing videos for another YouTuber and had been working with YouTubers for a very long time. Uh, he used to work at like a a company called Maker Studios that was a big MCN at the time. Uh, and then he started editing videos for other people. He worked at America's Funniest Home Videos and was doing some stuff there all over the place. And I was just a performing arts <laughs> kid and uh, spent my whole life singing, dancing and acting. And I had been working at a preschool and nannying and all sorts of different things. And then uh, Matt quit his job. And we were like, oh boy, because they this, I mean, something that Matt has learned prior to our channel is that YouTubers are not always the nicest people and so um we were in this a little bit of a pickle and we were like well what are we gonna do now and i decided i'm gonna start property management <laughs> and i found an on-site manager position and so we basically got a free apartment because we were living at the place i was working and because he didn't have the pressure to find work immediately because our house was paid for through the company. Um, he was able to finally just be like, let's just make a video. You know, he had always wanted to be, make his own videos, but he didn't necessarily want to be on camera or be the personality. And that's basically all I want to do. So <laughs> it just seemed like a match made in heaven. We made our first video on Red Dead Redemption 2. And luckily it exploded. How long ago? What year was that? That was 2018. So how did you come up with that idea? Because the sky's the limit in terms of what you could have done. Yeah, we had been joking about it for a while. I mean, since we met, we had been talking about it just like, oh, you know, make our own videos because I'm tired of working for these people and they're so mean to me and whatever. And so we were just like, yeah, let's do something. And then years later, we were just we were playing um, Breath of the Wild and the map sound opening going bloop, 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 you know was just like non-stop all the time and i it was just like a joke that i was sitting next to him and it was just like bloop, all the time it just it inspired the channel we were like what if we just made a video making fun of the sounds and the sights of what it's like to live with someone who plays games and then we haven't stopped since and a year later i quit my job and we moved out and it's been full time ever since <laughs> for the two of you yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is interesting. We got really lucky, but it, it did feel like the stars aligned. Yeah. You're a performer uh -huh. and love to perform and are good <laughs> at it. And he's, he's an editor. Yes. <laughs> and a tech guy. Yeah. And he, he's, and he's a very talented. He, I mean, he writes our videos and directs. He's extremely talented. He went to school for creative writing. Um, so he takes like my thoughts and then he turns them into like beautifully crafted jokes and just these awesome journeys that I could never do. But, you know, <laughs> I have to give him his creds. Well, and you're really great as well because you remind me of my cousin. She was a uh, co-host on the podcast for a while too. And she could be talking about grass growing and make it entertaining. Just the way she talks and the, her facial expressions and- I'm the, honored to be yeah. compared to someone like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I'm curious, did it take off right away on YouTube? It did, yeah. That one video did really well. It went, it, it, we owe it to Reddit really for, for the success of the channel, but also 
uh, for all of the mayhem that we've experienced in the channel, we owe to Reddit as well. So, you know, it's a double-edged uh, thing there. It takes Reddit, Reddit giveth and Reddit taketh away, I guess you could say. So how did Reddit giveth in the beginning? It Reddit gaveth by uh, just, they really, they upvoted our first video that was posted uh, I think a friend of ours or something posted it in the Red Dead Redemption subreddit and they really liked it and it got it got very popular. I think it was in our videos also, which is a huge subreddit. And so f for a while there, for like our first handful of videos, they were going straight to our videos and people were really upvoting them a lot. Um, and at that point we were anonymous and we had no faces. Uh, we didn't have names really. Um, we didn't want people to know who we were yet. We weren't ready. And uh, when we did our face reveal and we kind of let people in on the how the sausage is made, I guess, people weren't so stoked that Matt wrote the script. I think they felt like it was a sham or like it was fake. Oh, it was funny because it was him, you know, or that sort of thing. After that, we, we had some hard times. Um, the growth kind of plateaued, and then we had some issues otherwise. So The growth plateaued, coinc that coincided with when you started to be more open about your process and show your faces? Yeah, I think, um, I think so, if I have my timeline correct. We hit a million subscribers um, right around when like the last of us part two came out and like doom doom eternal had just come out that was 2020 i think so yeah that's a that's skyrocketing popularity and in, in in two years to get a million subscribers that's huge yeah and uh it's been four years since then and we're basically at a crawl subscriber wise we have now like 1.4 million you know so and there have been different things contributing to that. Um, part of it is a uh, burnout and part of it is just ridiculous uh, controversies or whatever that- Well, I I'm curious about all that and, and I'll talk about my own <laughs> issues with yeah, this. Yeah, I would love but, to. Yeah. But I don't think anyone would say that you've plateaued and or failed. Uh, you know, in the time that it took you to add on another 400,000 subscribers, I've I, I've had, I think, maybe 300,000 subscribers since the beginning of the pandemic. But because of where I come from, I consider that to be massively lucky and fortunate for me. So it's a matter of perspective, you know. Like it is, I, yeah. I, and I know how that feels like because you see the growth curve and you think, Poof, you know, in five years we'll have... 10 million subscribers like and and then it you know it starts to slow down and even though you're doing you know better than 99 literally 99.9999% of YouTubers out there it feels like a failure cuz the growth has slowed down so i just want to say that but um what was the backlash about so they they they're thinking that you're from the sound of it, it sounds like you're saying that they're saying, oh, she's just riding on his coattails. Right. Or like, uh, yeah, he's uh, there. People used to say things like, oh, he's using his girlfriend as a mouthpiece or, um, you know, oh, I knew a girl couldn't be that funny on her own or, you know, whatever. It, there's, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with like the history of Gamergate and like, you know, that sort of thing. So it's not always a friendly place for women in the gaming community, but for the most part, we've had a pretty decent time with that. But when things happen, they happen bigger, I think, because of that dynamic. Um, and early in the early days too, we got a lot of backlash from like um, women, from feminists, from, uh, you know, uh, and, and that was, that's harder for me, but, uh, just saying, oh, we're pandering to like this stereotype of, um, oh, the girls don't play games. They just watch the whatever. And that was never the goal. I can, I can see how it might come off that way, but we've, we've really just been sort of parodying our own experience. So it's never been like, this is how it has to be. 
um, in our eyes. But that's how I think people took it that like we were doing that. What exactly are they saying? They're they're saying that are they saying that you are playing into the patriarchy by encouraging or modeling or celebrating this doting wife that sits there and says whatever you want honey and i'm just he- I- i'm just here interested in your things i don't have i don't have my own interests and you don't have to be interested in my you don't have to do anything that i'm doing i'm just here for you that kind of thing that absolutely that and it's um it's funny like a lot of the things that people would say early on were like oh my gosh how many times is she gonna say my boyfriend all this girl talks about is my boyfriend this my boyfriend that and it's like yeah well i'm making a video about a thing that i watched him do i also have interests and things i'm interested in games but also i have this whole other part of me but that has nothing to do with the video so i i I don't know it's it's a strange um it's a strange dynamic i think between like the viewer and the character of girlfriend reviews which is a, 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 a satire of us. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's unfortunate, I'm sorry, that that happened. Uh, how did it feel, or how does it feel? Bad, bad, <laughs> really bad. I mean, especially back then when everything was happening so fast and so much, it just seemed, it seemed very intense, and especially like reading a, a thread of, uh, you know, like when, there was a, a subreddit that was called like girl gamers or something. And there was a thread about us in there. And it like broke my heart to see all these women talking about how bad we are for women. Um, what could they possibly, I don't understand. What could they say? I could pull it up, I'm sure. But uh, I'd, I just like that it's sexist, that it's uh, you, reducing, I don't know, like uh, promoting unhealthy gender stereotypes or something you know oh because girls can't play games girls just watch games maybe something like that right i don't know right it never occurred to me honestly it never crossed my mind that it would play like that i just it was just so like our experience at the time yeah that's that's unfortunate and do you think that those criticisms were coming from people that didn't really watch your channel uh, it's possible. It's possible. Maybe, maybe both, both types of people. Um, I'm sure that there's valid criticism out there. I know that, you know, we haven't been perfect all the time in the way that we've said things or the things, uh, I will just like, um, I'll give you an example that comes to mind. One of the early times that I remember oh, this could be a problem if we say things wrong or if we do things wrong, um, was when we did we did E3, we did coverage of E3 2019, and we went to E3, and we hadn't done our face reveal yet at this point. So we were just doing, like, kind of silly, like, you know, action shots and B-roll and that sort of thing and talking about the games. And... Um, one of the things that we showed was at the time we had been invited to go to a preview of cyberpunk 2077 that wasn't even you know fully done yet and they had set up this whole big thing and there were all of these uh posters from within the world of cyberpunk and one of them you know it's futuristic it's cyberpunk so people are adding like uh you know robotic parts to their body and there was a poster of a woman in like a bathing suit but she had like a huge bulge a huge like penis bulge and it was obviously like a a robotic penis but we like zoomed in on it and then one of the clips that we used was like a guy being like that's a penis and the con it hadn't occurred to me it hadn't occurred to me that this would be a problem but the comments were like that's so transphobic that's so whatever and i was like oh i guess so i was more thinking of like there's a huge erection on the wall and i you know don't care who it's attached to it's there but i understand and so like that was a huge moment for us where we were just like feeling very uh under attack or like uh pers- <laughs> i mean this sounds so dramatic and it's not a big deal but um being like scolded for something that we didn't like intend to do an accident i guess you know there's a way to 
say something to someone. It's like, hey, you know, that joke might hurt some people's feelings. I know you don't mean to do that, but just a little heads up. As if you're just talking with your friend, but the way that the internet will react. So was it a, a big reaction from a lot of people? Was it? It wasn't the worst ever, especially considering that like most of the gamer population isn't the kind to be upset by something like that. Um, so, it, but it was a loud minority and it felt really big at the time, even though it wasn't nearly any of the biggest <laughs> stuff that we would eventually get into. It felt really devastating at the time. I don't want to uh, uh, have you re-traumatize yourself, but, <laughs> but I'm personally interested in this because yeah. I, I've been through uh, smaller versions of this and I'm maybe more sensitive because I didn't grow up with the internet and I've had my ups and downs and it's been hard sometimes. So what was the biggest thing that you went through? <laughs> um, <laughs> it is a, it's a toss up. And well, it was actually relatively recent. Um, when uh, Hogwarts Legacy came out, we played it. Um, and, uh, what we had decided to do, we, we weren't really aware of how, we, I mean, first of all, fuck JK Rowling, absolutely kiss my ass, she can shut up forever. So for those that don't know this, because some <laughs> of my audience might be as old as old as me, I'm familiar with this new story, but can you explain the background? Yeah, so JK Rowling, author of uh, the Harry Potter series, wrote this awesome series, Harry Potter, about loving yourself and accepting yourself and learning to be who you truly are and not hiding yourself. And then all of a sudden is this loud, outspoken, uh, transphobic weirdo on Twitter constantly, all the time, to the point where Matt and I are like, is there a carbon monoxide leak in her house? Like, what is happening? Why is she doing this? What is, I don't get it. Anyways, so there is a, is a, a good reason to want to boycott Harry Potter things because it puts money into JK Rowling's pocket. Um, and we knew this at the time, but we weren't aware, I think, of how uh, big, uh, we didn't know that people were really boycotting the game, like really going to be mad if you played the game. And this game was, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. touted to be maybe one of the best Harry Potter games that had ever been made, right? It wasn't just another Harry Potter game. It was supposed yeah. to be like a really good Harry Potter game. I would say it's the best Harry Potter game made, but the, all, that doesn't say much, <laughs> to be honest. It, right, right. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that's part of the problem, right? That it's like, give us a, a game in this world, you know? It's, and I, I don't know how old you are, but I'm guessing you're of the Harry Potter generation where you, you might have waited in line or knew people that waited in line for the books or something. And Harry Potter is a big deal to you. It, it was it was definitely a big part of my childhood. Um, not a great reader, but the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and all your friends and all the people. Are, yeah. And uh, at what point, like for me, uh, if you believe the allegations against Michael Jackson, what do you do? Uh, at, at what point is the art separate from the artist, you know? Because for me, I grew up listening to Michael Jackson since I was born, literally, when he was in the Jackson 5. And all the memories that I have with my family and the yeah. memories I have at different phases of my life listening to Michael Jackson and, and the Jacksons. So I'm supposed to just never have that music and I, uh, because of the possible horrific things that he did. Um, you know, he gets to harm people and take away a slice of my childhood and my life, you know, and my enjoyment. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with that. So uh, where is that where you were at with the game? Yeah, well, it's interesting that you say that because uh, a little bit after we started getting this like backlash, we were on stream. And that was one of the things that Matt said. He, was, he, he brought up Michael Jackson and he brought up um, uh, the pianist. And he was like, are you not gonna watch the pianist? one of the greatest Holocaust movies ever made because the director was a bad person. Like, do we, do we not talk, do we discount it even though it was a very valuable piece of film? Yeah. 
Roman Polanski? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it brought up Michael Jackson and then... Uh, but that's not going to shut down... <laughs> I was just going to say that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because if people show up wanting to be upset about something, it doesn't matter what you say. The anti-JK Rowling sentiment had reached perhaps its zenith coincidentally just before that game was released. Yeah. And Probably because of the game too. Like the, the amp up to the game, people were just like getting excited about it and then people were getting mad. And then there was just like a, who can be louder than the other? type of thing. Oh, okay. So were people yelling at the boycotters? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which sucked because like, we consider ourselves allies and uh, would never want to do anything to hurt anyone. Um, So when we played the game, which we got a code for, um, and we were like, hey, come watch us play it. So you don't have to and you can see what you're missing. And we um, we set up a fundraiser for the Trevor project at the time uh, before the stream even started. We were like, Hey, we're going to play this game. And also if you want, you can donate to the, the Trevor project and you know, we'll support an LGBTQ charity. Can, can I, can I ask you, uh, uh, because to get micro on this, mm-hmm. my wife and I talk a lot about the podcast and the YouTube channel. She hates being on microphone, like with, with a passion, unlike myself and and you but yeah. uh but she likes doing the behind the scenes stuff but you know we'll have like team meetings essentially about like okay we're about to do this thing how do we avoid making a mistake what should we try to highlight and you know da 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 it sounds like you and Matt were having those team meetings what had you landed on through that through that um, discussion it's interesting actually like we went back and forth a little bit on how big of a deal this was we weren't sure we really there's it's very hard to gauge like how the internet feels about something can i ask you a micro on that how do you research that because sometimes i am lost figuring that maybe other people have a way of is there a subreddit that you go to or something yeah honestly like matt and i are on very different internets you know so his experience on the internet then the things that he reads people's feelings about things are very different so like i was seeing people being upset about it on twitter and he was seeing none of it just nothing like silence so i was a little bit like i think maybe we need to be a little like proactive about this and i think that we should prepare a fundraiser and we should like get out ahead of it and just be like this is what's happening and he a little bit was like i think that makes us look like we're doing too much and it's a little over the top because nobody's mad about this. It was a little bit just like, I don't know. We had, we didn't know. So we tried to make it as casual as possible. Just like, yeah, there's a fundraiser. Come watch us play if you want. And then you don't have to play it yourself. And then we're going to make a video and it's going to be silly. And, uh, as soon as I tweeted that and we started streaming, it was like within minutes that I tweeted it. And then we started streaming. It was like the Twitch chat just flooded with people being like, I'm so disappointed in you guys, unfollowing, unsubscribing. How could you? I thought you were allies. I thought you were this. Um, A lot of like, you know, those aren't mean things necessarily to say to someone, but they were extremely devastating. Like they were hurt, really hurtful. Um, And I was super overwhelmed. And then there were people coming in and calling, calling us like turfs and calling us just like horrible names, telling us to like die. So you're live streaming it and the two of you are processing this uh, input. Uh Uh-huh. And and so, yeah, and it was as soon as the embargo was lifted on the code. So it was like right at the beginning, like the game wasn't even out yet fully. So it was very early on in the the storyline of Hogwarts Legacy. And then, um, yeah, it was just like this bombardment of like people being upset with us. And I got overwhelmed (laughs) and we weren't on camera. Anyways, I just got a little verklempt and I got a little choked up and I said, can we take a quick break? I think of whatever. And Matt was like, go ahead. I'm going to keep playing whatever. And uh, I stepped How was he processing it? I think, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. Like one of us... uh, 
one of us takes over the role of the like sensitive one and then one of us takes over the role of the like antagonist a little bit with twitch chat and you alternate those roles is that what you're saying sometimes yeah sometimes but mostly <laughs> mostly i'm sensitive and he's kind of a uh you know scamp <laughs> with the twitch chat so um a little bit he was taking it a little lighter and being sillier about it but it did deeply affect us both um and it was an ongoing thing after that so how did you feel after and throughout bad. that time really bad really awful just it felt like such an um so it, it 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 was not our um only big controversy but it was the hardest one i think for us to go through because it was people were upset with us who we generally align with you know in beliefs and stuff right it's one thing if some random fly by night viewer attacks me which i can usually tell by the way they're talking but it's when long term viewers fans uh, say that kind of, you know, I've been watching you for three years and I'm really disappointed in you. That, that's something different, right? That feels different. Mm -hmm. it, it, it felt really different because we had had a run in before with a subreddit that was the opposite of what we think and is very sexist and transphobic. And we kind of went to bat with them back in the day. And this was just like so much worse. And it was so, the lies, like the, the not, I don't want to be like the lies they were saying, but like the story spun, it got spun uh, very quickly as opposed to before. Like the, the lies or the things that people were saying about us were so outrageous before that it was just like, <laughs> okay, any level-headed person isn't going to believe that. But like this kind of stuff where they're like, oh he brought up roman polanski and michael jackson he's a pedophile supporter was like literally somebody wrote an article calling matt a pedophile supporter so it, it was just like what can we even do what can we do yeah you know? what did you do <laughs> for about a week we did nothing we matt continued to play the game sometimes on stream sometimes not our poor twitch moderators they uh worked overtime during that time for sure and uh yeah and then we just kind of thought about it part of the reason that we were so like interested in looking at this game was to roast and like rip a new one for like jk rowling and also there's a history of like anti-Semitism with the goblins and stuff. And I'm a Jewish person. And so we were just like very interested in just like making fun of this game. And also the game wasn't very good. It was a little bit boring and bland and not fun. And so we were excited to like make a girlfriend review, rip this game to shreds and everyone will have a nice time. And then we realized like, we can't really do that at this point. We have to talk about this because people were writing articles about the girl who cried on stream because of the bullying, the relentless bullies, the harassed off stream, like those kinds of headlines were coming out. And it was just, it was so bizarre. It was so strange. So we just sat down and we wrote a video that was just like very serious and quick and uh, not funny about our experience a little bit and like what had happened. And it was just, it sucked. It sucked. What was the reaction to that? Well, it got a lot of views because people were just like waiting for us to, what was going to happen. For the most part, people were supportive of us. But then the, the nasty stuff where people were like, uh, you know, screw those uh, freaking uh, guys in dresses. I bought two copies of, of Hogwarts Legacy because they made you cry. It's just like horrible transphobic, awful stuff. These like transphobes coming out and supporting us. It was so nasty and so just like, it was not nice. It was just not nice. It was bad. There was no winning. There was no winning. We should have never played the game. We, we, uh... So you regret it. Yeah, not 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 necessarily because us playing the game hurt people, and I, I maybe it did, but I don't I don't think that the pain that uh, you know uh, uh, you're a YouTuber you like playing a game you don't like or like don't agree with is equal to the pain of 
what we went through basically <laughs> like uh so i regret it because i i would have liked to spare us that pain yeah it's, it's not worth it it's not worth it yeah and so now going forward we just don't if some if we get a whiff of controversy or like whatever we're just like and next <laughs> and not for us <laughs> and there we go yeah that's interesting i i think that that's another crucible for content providers that we all will run into that moment where we have that experience. So when you have that attack, yeah. you can process it and react in a lot of different ways. And I react like you do, <laughs> which is like, um, yeah, no, let's just, I just wanna have a relaxing, fun experience. And maybe there's an answer there to uh, wrestle with that and face it and, try to work it out with people, but it's not worth not being able to sleep at night and crying into my cereal in the morning. And and also, I don't know if you had this experience, but I started having, uh, the, the, the event for me was the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial two years ago. Right, right. Th that was minor, the reaction compared to what you went through. Maybe. I, 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 I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, but it was, you know, analogous. And it took me maybe a year to feel comfortable on the microphone again. I was flinching with every idea and every word. I'm like, oh, oh God, you know, and it's a, it's a trauma reaction of yes. just like, don't, someone's going to slap you across the face with your next word. And so you're just like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And the frustration that I would have is, if I could just have a in-person conversation with these people, if we could just talk it out, yeah. And 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 they and they could, you know, in in time, you know, you know, in in real time, they could be like, eh, you know, how people when they're listening, they they just start going, eh, and and that's what I'm used to, you know. I I, I in my world in psychology, uh, there's a constant ebb and flow between pleasing people and pissing people off, you know, as a professor, uh, you know, I'll say something and I'll see half the students kind of look at me like, huh? And I'll be like, oh, uh, so I must, what did I do? What's happening? And they'll go, well, this and that. I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's dumb. Or I misspoke. Or, but we pre-record this shit. So <laughs> like, we have no idea. And then all of us, and, and then meanwhile, we ha are getting this react, or even if you're doing live streaming, People aren't there to talk with you, so they their anger is building and building and building, and then they comment, you know, and you had no idea. And if you knew, you would you would have been okay. Wait, so you know, like it, with the uh, live stream with the Harry Potter game, I mean, how many thousands of people were watching you at the time? Oh gosh, I don't. I mean, we our Twitch views fluctuate so much, and. Uh... But a time like that, I think that was our highest viewers at like a few thousand. Yeah, at least. So, yeah. I so think. you're in an auditorium, and there's right. th there's three thousand people, and you walk in, and the two of you start playing the game. In the the first few rows, you would mm -hmm. see something going on, yeah. and you'd you'd be like, w w wait, so, or you mm -hmm. would see three people having an issue, and right. everyone else is just like, because you know when people are enjoying things. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily comment or say anything, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the problem. That's the problem that I, and we we try to remind ourselves that with with YouTube all the time. It's just like most people, most normal YouTube enjoyers aren't commenting. You just I I don't know how often you comment on a video that you like. Almost never. almost never. Yeah. <laughs> almost never. And. Yeah. Uh, because I'm afraid because I've been misunderstood. Like, I'll comment and people will be like, Ugh, and I'll, I'll, oh, no. When I first started using Reddit 15 years ago, I would I would comment or post things. And I have just learned I'm too sensitive. I, I'm just going to lurk because there's something wrong with me or I don't know. Yeah. No, I think most people are like that. Most my, of the people I know in real life just are like don't comment on a YouTube video and if you look at the comparison of comments to views you know you could have several thousand views and like a handful of comments but the people who are commenting are <laughs> like 
usually they ha they feel like they have to say something and whether it's good or bad um they feel like it's necessary to share this information with you hope hoping that you see it and so most of the good things it's not an emergency i think for them to feel like they need to tell you like hey this was good or whatever but right i'm enjoying it in all caps you know yes but it does help us like for knowing what our audience likes when people are like oh my gosh i loved this part like that helps us thank you <laughs> that's good but you know oftentimes most videos will have a this one didn't do it for me or this one felt lazy for me i will occasionally run into these issues with comments or emails or something if it gets to a certain point like it did with the trial i will have a breaking point and then i can't help but to talk about it in my in my content and, and i can't help but to be honest i can't help but to be authentic and I know that sounds kind of silly, but no, mm -mm. It, it sometimes isn't the best thing to do. But I just, I always, I don't know. I just generally think like if I can just explain to people where I was coming from, I believe that that will help on some level. Even if I'm still wrong, they'll go like, "Oh, okay, well, you're still wrong, but I, I, I guess I understand." Yeah, um, and I think what that has done with my YouTube comment section is it's created this uh, community of trust and understanding such that I don't get those kinds of comments. Plus, I have communicated frequently about how sensitive I am. <laughs> um, do you do anything like that? Well, our, our content is so um, scripted and curated that it doesn't leave a ton of room for candid uh, conversation. We have been musing on a podcast for a long time now and i think that would give us an opportunity to do more of that thing but i think it would just feel so bizarre and so out of place if we just like popped on camera and we're like hey uh our feelings are hurt please be nice to us <laughs> you know and like anyways back to the video <laughs> but to me um and i know because your content is a certain tone and mine is uh, a different uh sort of tone I don't know what my tone is. I don't really have a tone exactly. I think, but I, I, I mean, you know, can, candid, but but uh, educated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's nice. That's, that's yeah. actually pretty good. Um, yeah. But I, I can't help but to see everything in terms of my clinical work. And when I work with couples, what I am always hammering on is communication and trust and knowing your feelings your primary feelings of fear and pain and communicating that instead of transferring it into anger or withdrawal. And with the audience as a entity, I am in a relationship with them and they are in a relationship with me. It's not a one-way street, it's a two-way street, right? So I believe, I didn't know if this would happen, but I think it has happened that when I'm vulnerable, reasonable. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. I'm just like, look, it's not your fault. I'm sensitive. I understand where you're coming from. You're free to criticize me if you want to. And when you say it like that, it let me tell you what that does to me <laughs> and where I go with it and what happens to me. And then there's been this back and forth in a way, like as if I was in a relationship with just one person, you know what I mean? And I think, I don't know if that, maybe it's just a fantasy, but I, I, I don't know very many content providers that will do that with their audience. So I, I don't know how you could do it, but I would wish, it bums me out that you go through that, you know, that you have to, like, do you, do you avoid comments or do you always read the comments? I, yeah, I always read the comments. Um, Matt will and won't sometimes depend, you know, um, he likes to know, but it also is a, a pretty big source of anxiety, I think, for him, um, understandably so. And uh, I, I do, there are times that it would be nice to get on camera and just be like, hey, just so you guys know, this is whatever. It just, it, most of the time it, it feels like such a, like we would have to go out of our way to include that in a video. So I think it would require a different like vehicle. I think a podcast or like some other type of content would be better for that for us. 
Um, but I, I too dream of a world where we can all be very open and upfront with how we make each other feel. Yeah, because I think audiences don't think we can be hurt. Right, yeah. Because they're like, well, you're a famous person. And look at all the positive comments. And they've yeah. never been in those shoes. They've never had 99 positive things said and one negative and then gone home and cried themselves asleep that night because of that yeah. one negative thing. It, that's what happens to us. We're yeah. not, we didn't evolve for the volume of, of, of feedback, you know? Right, right. And we're not celebrities in the sense that like somebody with media training or a PR team has a whole team of people to help them navigate this. Um, we also, it's, it's an unusual situation where these people wanting to say mean things have a direct line into our eyeballs. Whereas, you know, a, a movie star you know, you, you can't write a comment on a movie and then it goes to the person who made the movie. You know, it's it doesn't work like that. It's uh, it's very strange. It's a really weird environment to be in. <laughs> Has that reading of comments affected your content, affected how you approach the content? Well, well like you were saying um, that you like will flinch or something if you're saying that's that's what it's become. Like we're writing scripts and we're editing and we're like, how do I say this? How do I write this? How do I dance around my words so that I can make the audience understand what I'm trying to say and where the punchline is going to end up before they get angry and start commenting prior to the punchline being said, you know, that sort of thing. And um, you weren't like that in the beginning. No, mm -mm, no, no. It was much easier to just like... Does that degrade your enjoyment? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been we've significantly slowed down in uploads since the Harry Potter thing. <laughs> I, I I I think that's a tragedy. I was there, and because of the way that I am, I just was like, I'm gonna try all the things I know to try to get back to a place where I feel safe. And I would even say that to people. I, I would say, I want to feel safe. I, when I turn on the microphone, I want to feel safe. I, I, and I don't feel safe right now. The internet is not a safe place for us. <laughs> but your fans, you yeah. know, like the random fly-by-night people, yeah. But your, your people, if they knew, and you could have a back and forth, this is just my, I don't know if this is true, but you might be able to build that you know, but if you're not vulnerable, you know, in the way that you and Matt are together, you know, we were talking about that earlier, if you're just hoping that they'll stop, <laughs> but they don't really know how it's affecting you, and also the people that like you, uh, like I feel like for me, uh, because people know my heart to some extent, they're more likely to fill the comment section, not on purpose, but uh, just because they know that I'm I'm paying attention, then they're going to say nice things, or at the very least, just like engaging things, you know. So, I, I, and I feel like a lot of content providers are suffering because their audience just doesn't even know what's in their heart. It's true, and it's it's funny. I think that it's pretty natural for most people to. Ad ad adopt that kind of behavior everywhere in their lives where like I'm I'm just gonna pretend everything is fine I'm not gonna reach out for help I'm not gonna bother anybody that sort of thing and it's totally what we're doing you know that's totally what we do as content creators we just are just like all right on to the next one we press on and hopefully we can keep keep the the train going. And I think that's what most content providers do, mm -hmm. but they burn out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they burn out. It, it's it's an interesting thing that you're uh, putting into my brain because it, it's true. Like, why do we think that content creators, that YouTubers say, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below? It's because it works. It makes people do that. It, it reminds them, oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll leave a comment. Just from YouTubers being like, it really helps us if you leave a comment, if you want to, whatever. And they're like, okay, yeah, here I go. 
we don't do that <laughs> just normally sometimes but then when we remember to or we incorporate it include it in the video somehow we do see a boost of like people engaging with the content or if we remember to shout out our patreon or whatever we see a huge boost in that sort of thing and i don't see why it can't be the same for hey don't forget to be nice to me <laughs> you know like don't forget to treat me like a nice uh, friend you know it could it could be the same you know all those people that you were talking about that don't normally con comment level-headed fans if they know, you know they're more likely to do something right you know and what i think it does is it alerts the audience that they individually matter to us that they're not just like a like what you're saying as to a celebrity like you go to you go to see a big blockbuster movie you're sitting in the movie theater you don't think that your reaction to the movie will get to anyone working on the movie, you know, the director or the actors, or, you know, you could stand up in the middle of the movie theater and go like, this is shit. Or you could stand up and go like, this is the best movie ever. You don't have any fantasy that anyone who made the movie is going to know what you just said. But on YouTube, it is fucking different. Uh, 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 it's, it's, it's a direct. And so I don't think any of us are used to that, including the audience. I don't think. And so when you uh, tell them, that they matter and you see them, then they're like, oh, oh, okay, huh. So I, I, uh, I didn't know. I thought I was just sitting in the back corner in the darkness, but you're telling me I'm in the light. Like you see, we see each other. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, oh, and then they're a human being and they probably care a lot about you and Matt, I'm guessing, because the two of you are endearing and, you know, you let them oh, into your lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. And... You know, you have a, a 1.4 million subscribers. That's not an unpopular channel. You deserve to feel that love. Thank you. I, I mean, it's true. Like, you're kind of blowing my mind right now. It's just like, why not? You know, I'm always telling my friends or whoever, like, if you need something, you need to ask. You need to tell people what you need. And here I am just... <laughs> not doing that <laughs> anyway, you know. I, I had to kind of figure it out and I'm a shrink. It took me a long time. You know, I was uh, talking with iDubs and mm -hmm. you know, he went through a whole other kind of thing and yeah. he's still kind of going through it, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to tell him as well, like there's a way through, you know, that because the common way that people do it up until this point is you just are a brazen, you know, you don't give a shit kind of content provider and then you just make your shit and you, and you rake in all the dough and you go like, screw the haters. And that's like a childish way of looking at the world. Like no one deals with the world that way. Uh, it, it, people act like they are uncaring about feedback. Meanwhile, Conan O'Brien can't read his own reviews. Um, so uh, we have to grow up not only as content providers, but as as the audience, they have to grow up too. Absolutely, yeah. And the and the the way that we interact with content has to evolve and change as well. Like it can't be the same forever. Um, but yeah, it's it's very. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm so sometimes when I listen to your videos, I'll have like epiphanies where I'm just like, I do that, and then it's like a game changer for me, and I feel like I'm having one of those moments <laughs> real time right now talking to you. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this is a. This is interesting. Yeah, maybe maybe things do need to change or maybe maybe it would be better to just be more you know, unscripted or whatever, just like honest, have a little moment of honesty before we get into the video. Um that would be cool. But and it's it's also kind of a a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will, where when we as content creators are like okay, I'm just going to keep my head down and keep bulldozing forward, then people will see us as emotionless, uh, unaffected bulldozers that they can hurl whatever they want at. But if, but unless we share that this is affecting us in these ways, people won't know how to interact with us. Yeah, like when your partner is hurt by you, and they avoid because they don't trust and they go into the other room and play a video game all day and you're going 
oh, my partner doesn't like me. He likes the video game more than me. He's a jerk face. I guess I'll give him the stink eye later. And then that just builds over time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then you get comfortable with treating each other that way. And it's the same kind of thing with the friends and internet people. Yeah. And it, it, it just saddens me because, you know, a lot of YouTubers closed their channel recently yeah. for various mm -hmm. reasons. But yeah. mm -hmm. I think that some of them closed it because of this. Oh, yeah, for sure. The, the ones that we've talked to, for sure, we've, we've spoken with people that have stopped. Because of this? Because of, uh, yeah, mostly. You know, we've had some good YouTuber friends that have had controversies that happen that seem maybe a little, like, personal or something, like a little bit, like, not our business type things. Um, like the content provider goes through a divorce or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then it becomes everybody's, you know, everybody's business and then people take sides and cancel someone or whatever. And it just seems a little bit like I've started thinking, okay, if I were friends with this person who's having a controversy right now in real life, would I stop being their friend because of this? Like I try to think about it. Would How would I react to, to a, an acquaintance telling me that they were going through this right now? And that's been a helpful thing for me. And it makes me sad that like a lot of people end their careers that have so much talent and have built themselves up just based off of their talent and charisma. And then they just go away. They just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Because, because the way I see it of a misunderstanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Misunderstanding and just like a lack of uh, emotional intelligence, I think, from many people that they just are not in tune with why they're feeling the way that they are and who it's actually directed at, <laughs> you know? Well, I didn't realize this episode was going to be you and I just uh, commiserate. <laughs> and this has been validating to me because Good. I'm still healing and yeah. struggling so are with, we. with this, that mm -hmm. when I hear you talk about your process in a vulnerable way, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not crazy. <laughs> For us content providers, you know, you're putting yourself out there. It, it's it's a part of your soul, and to have it just be ridiculed or dismissed or attacked, it's not this separate. You know, it's 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 like that was me. You know that you're you're attacking me. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. You're not only attacking me. You're attacking me for this thing that I've put all of this work and effort into, and have tried to be my best self in this moment and you don't like it. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about you, you know, the audience, as I was making it. I wasn't just sitting, you know, I was like, okay, maybe they'll like this, or people have been asking me to do more of this and less of this, so I will, I'll do less of that. And, you know, uh, yeah, I ran into that a, a little bit during uh, Love is Blind season six. I was, I was getting some, you know, fairly mild criticism, honestly, but, it, it was... What were people mad about with season six? It was... Um, I mean, I won't bore you with the details, no, but... No, please. This is my, this is my specialty. <laughs> well, <laughs> I will yammer, and I get both criticisms or suggestions, constructive feedback, whatever you want to say. People will say, you talk too much, and others will say, you don't talk enough. The people who say you don't talk enough, they'll say, like, you didn't go into this topic, you know, and I think about that too. I'm just, you know, because psychology is this huge like ball of wax and I'll touch on something and then I'll be like, in my head, I'm like, that's about 15 minutes of lecturing. But these people over here are going to yell at me. Meanwhile, you have all these people in the middle that are just like cool with whatever. You right. Know what I mean? mm -hmm. But I had just gotten enough from both of those extremes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, during season six that I one night I had just seen one too many of those comments and I just I just sort of unloaded. Yeah. I, I didn't attack them. I, I think I, was, I remember you talking about this now, but please continue. Yeah, I, I you know, and I was you know, uh, differentiated enough by saying to the person, you know, you're being nice and you know, your comment is fine and there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. This is all me, I'm sensitive, but just to let, you know, I'm following that principle of like, this is how it's affecting me. And people are very caring and protective, 
but in the end, uh, it, it went well because, you know, instead of waiting for six months of me building in resentment and feeling unsafe and, uh, um, I had my freak out <laughs> and then they reacted and then I had to kind of apologize for freaking out. But then even the individual that I was communicating with, we emailed with each other and we're good now, you know, in the way that you do when you're in, in, a, in, in real person life. Relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you can't not have those moments when you're in a relationship, you know, the, clo the closer you get to someone, the more that's going to happen. Yeah. That's, that's really great. I'm I'm glad that you have that and it's uh, inspiring definitely for I think other content creators should be thinking about stuff like that. We, and after all of this uh kvetching and complaining that I've done today, I do want to say that our audience is awesome, especially for a gaming community which can be hit or miss. Our audience is a little bit older, they're a little bit more mature you know, we're, we're so highbrow, but, um, they're great. So that's not to diminish the awesome comments that we do get. It's just, I know, you know, this, I just want to say that, like, we're not ungrateful, <laughs> you know, it's just, it, that's the bad stuff does tend to stick out is all. Yeah. Is all. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. <sighs> that's a lot. It's a lot what we're talking yeah. about. And, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to wrap this up, Shelby. I mean, I guess we'll just have to have more talks in the future is what it has to be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks for coming on my channel and my podcast, Shelby, from Dude, Girlfriend Reviews. So honored. I am such a huge fan again. And I just, I loved your video with iDubs. I, I said to you that I just like, it's it's been a real pleasure to watch him uh, explore himself. And it was a real pleasure to watch you experience that with him in that, in that episode. So I just, and you were just such a positive impact on my life and your channel is so awesome. And I can't say enough awesome things about what you do. So I'm honored to be here. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Shelby. Mm -hmm. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself. Why should people take care of themselves, Shelby? Because you deserve it. You really, really do. <laughs> <laughs>